this uh, topic on focus on thrombotic microangiopathy. Uh, as you know, I'm Mariangela Pellegrini, the Educational and Patient Program Manager of the European uh, Reference Center for Rare Hematological Disease called Euroblonet. And it's my great pleasure to welcome you on behalf of the whole ERN to the ninth topic on focus. Um, as you know, this program has been developed by a uh, collaboration between DRN and the French National Center for Thrombotic Microangiopathies, the CNR MAT, and consists of 15 sessions. And the program is accredited by 11 continuing medical educational points um, given by the European Board for Accreditation in Hematology. So today we are going to uh, have a lecture on TTP in the elderly, led by uh, Professor Jen Fadlala, who is a health practitioner at the San Luis Hospital in Paris. She specializes in clinical immunology. Uh, she completed her PhD in immunology at the Pierre and Marie Curie University in Paris, studying intestinal humoral responses to IgA deficiencies. Uh, the same year, she won the research fellowship of the French Rare Immunohematological Disease Healthcare Network, Filière Marie. And um, her scientific publication and career research work are mainly focused on immunoglobin deficiency, intestinal dysbiosis, common variable in immunodeficiency, enteropathy, and primitive immunodeficiency diseases. So, dear Professor Fadala, please, the floor is to you. Thank you. Thank you, Mary Angela. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, do you hear me? Yes. Um, uh, just uh, thank you, Mary Angela, for this uh, introduction. I'm not professor, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm uh, in the clinical immunologist in uh, Saint Louis Hospital in Paris, and uh, we have. Uh, the great chance in uh, Saint Louis uh, to uh, uh, be the referral center of uh, thrombotic microangiopathies uh, together with the Saint Antoine of uh, Hospital of Paul Copo. So we have the chance to see many TMAs and uh, and many uh, ITTP. The subject today is uh, ITTP in the elderly. So I'm gonna just focus on this uh, particular population since you had a lot of uh, sessions about uh, TTP. Um, I hope that uh, the lecture won't be uh, boring. Uh, I make my, <laughs> my best uh, to interest you, interest you uh, about this topic. Uh, and uh, please feel free to ask questions. I know that you cannot interrupt me, but uh, ask questions in the chat and we'll uh, talk uh, with great pleasure uh, at the end of uh, the lecture. So this, is, this wasn't a very uh, easy lecture to prepare uh, because uh, many question uh, raises, raise, uh, sorry, um, in this topic, uh, because first of all, <laughs> the first question I've asked myself is how, what is elderly? So it's a very tricky question, and uh, well, the definition isn't clear at all. Um, who um, World Health Organiza Organization has defined uh, aging uh, above, uh, beyond 60 years, but it's a chronological age uh, definition, and it's not a physiological age definition. Uh, indeed, physiological age seem to be more relevant to uh, evalu evaluate uh, patients, but uh, it's not feasible uh, easily. So uh, elderly is defined by uh, chronological age. Uh, 
Uh, more specifically, uh, in uh, hematological malignancies or in uh, immunological uh, uh, conditions as uh, ITP, uh, elderly is defined uh, beyond 60 years old or 65 years old, depending on the diseases like uh, AML or uh, uh, myelodysplastic syndromes um, or lymphomas. So what about uh, TTP? Well, uh, 60 years old seem to be a good cutoff, um, a relevant cutoff in TTP. Uh, you might have seen uh, the, this publication before uh, in uh, your sessions. Uh, it's a publication of Igal Benamou and uh, colleagues uh, in Rouen. Uh, published in 2012, uh, which um, uh, developed a predictive score of mortality in ITTP. And the score is very simple and based on uh, clinical and biological variables. And as you can see here, um, beyond 60 years, mortality increases, and beyond 70 years, it drastically increases. Besides, uh, after 60 years old, um, in the predictive uh, score uh, model of Igal Benamou, uh, you gain two points in the mortality score, which uh, corresponds to uh, a predictive mortality rate of 27%, which is huge and is, is higher than the expected morta mortality uh, rate uh, in uh, TTP, all ages included. Uh, moreover, Eric Mariotte here uh, in uh, Saint Louis uh, has published in uh, 2013 uh, a paper about uh, critically ill uh, uh, ITTP patients unresponsive to treatment. And uh, when he studied the patients, uh, well, uh, 60 years old was uh, an age uh, beyond. Uh, uh, was the, the age, uh, was a very um, uh, high risk factor of uh, being unresponsive to, unresponsive to treatment uh, in uh, TTP. So I guess that 60 years uh, is, makes sense uh, to define elderly in um, ITTP in particular, since uh, it changes the clinical course of the disease. So what do we know? We don't know many things uh, about elderly patients in TTP because uh, data are very scarce about uh, elderly patients. The, all the data uh, about uh, TTP are uh, clinical or biological data uh, studying the, uh, the, all the patients uh, regardless to uh, age range. So we have very bulk information, but we have very very little information about uh, particularly el elderly patients. Uh, what we know from the recent cohorts, uh, like Hercules trial, Titan trials, I guess that you had uh, Mrs. Scully uh, as a lecturer, which is a great uh, honor. Um, uh, the mean age of the patients wa is uh, 45 years. That, that's what we know. Uh, three series in the literature uh, are focused on uh, elderly in ITTP. There is a very, the largest series is a French series published in Blood in 2019. Uh, we have another French series about TMA, uh, meaning thrombotic microangiopathies, all included in uh, French ICU here in Saint Louis. And uh, we have an Italian uh, series uh, of uh, elderly patients in, uh, in TTP. So these are the three main series of elderly people in ITTP condition. Here in the French uh, cohort, so I, I wanted to know uh, how, how many people are uh, elderly in uh, ITTP condition. Uh, and uh, here in the French cohort, they have included uh, 411 patients with a defined uh, ITTP uh, within in, in 16 uh, years of uh, of inclusion. 
and uh, among the uh, 411 patients, 71 patients were uh, uh, older than 60 years, uh, which represents 17% uh, of uh, prevalence. In uh, the Milan uh, registry, so the Italian uh, theory, they put the cutoff uh, at above uh, 65 years old. Uh, they had a, a smaller sample, uh, 100 and 143 uh, patients with uh, defined ITTP, and only 16 were uh, above uh, uh, 65 years old. So it's not the same cutoff, but it represents 11% uh, of uh, the patients. And finally here uh, in ICU, uh, take, uh, taking all TMA, including uh, ITTP, uh, the patient with ITTP uh, older than 60 years old represented 20% of the patients. So overall, we can say that uh, mainly 15 to 20% of the patients presenting with ITTP uh, are uh, older than 60 years old. So it's not, so ITTP is not only uh, a disease of the young woman, uh, the population, uh, the age of the population is increasing and uh, uh, indeed uh, patients are uh, older than uh, the first description uh, of uh, Moscovitz. So th the next question was, uh, is there any difference uh, between clinical presentations when you're older in ITTP? These are the results of the French cohort. So as I said before, uh, they have included 411 patients, 340 were, were younger than 60 years old and 71 were older than 60 years old and they made two groups and compared the two groups. Uh, regarding uh, clinical presentation, well, uh, Cerebral involvement was not different in, in uh, the both groups, but which what is interesting here is that neurological symptoms are different, meaning in the younger people, uh, headaches are the main symptom, whereas in the older people, delirium, seizures, and behavioral abnormalities are more prevalent. So it's not a typical presentation uh, or a very a specific presentation uh, in the elderly. Uh, besides, um, the main difference uh, is uh, acute renal uh, injury, which is more prevalent here in the elderly with the median range of uh, plasma creatinine of 124 uh, micromol per uh, liter. And it's, it's it is statistically different in both groups. And uh, finally, which is very important, uh, cytopenias are, uh, very, are mild in the older group uh, and thrombopenia is not as profound as in the younger group. You have here the median of uh, 22 versus 13 in the younger group. So these, are, these difference are very important and are consistent with the, other, the two other series, because here in the Italian series, you can see that neurological presentation and renal presentation are more prevalent in uh, the older group. And here in the study, the French study of uh, the uh, old thrombotic microangiopathies in ICU, you can see that older presentation is represented by uh, altered mental state and uh, acute renal injury. The other uh, parameters were, were not statist statistically uh, different. So older people present, uh, have a clinical presentation, uh, very neurological with uh, atypical, atypical symptoms such as behavior, uh, behavioral uh, abnormalities and acute renal uh, failure. There was no difference in the other uh, organ damage uh, uh, in both groups. So this is very important, why? Because first of all, uh, 
those features uh, induce uh, a delay uh, between uh, admission and diagnosis. Here you can see that in the French cohort, the diagnosis of ITTP in the elderly group is of, of a median of three days versus one day in the younger uh, people. So, which means that uh, indeed uh, a person above uh, 65 years old, which is admitted at the hospital for uh, confusion or uh, behavioral uh, abnormalities, uh, you don't think about ITTP uh, in the first place. So this might ex explain uh, the diagnosis delay, which is very, very important to keep in mind. Moreover, this is a very nice uh, series uh, of the Johns Ho Hopkins Hospital cohort, uh, studying the reliability of the two predictive scores, published uh, predictive scores in uh, TTP, uh, with, which are uh, the plasmic score and the French score. And uh, they studied it in um, all uh, the cohort of uh, thrombotic uh, microangiopathies. So they had uh, 132 uh, patients admitted for thrombotic uh, microangiopathies. Among them, uh, 75 were real uh, TTPs and 77 and 57, sorry, were other TMA. And they have tested uh, in each patient. Uh, the reliability of the scores uh, according to the age range. So you can see here that uh, after 60 years old, um, specificity of uh, the French score is uh, of 73% versus 94% uh, and 96% uh, in the younger people, which is very important because French score is a very good uh, score with a very high specificity, which is very important in such conditions as uh, critically uh, critical as uh, ITTP to have a very high specificity because you you want you can you you don't want to miss uh, TTP. So specificity is very important, and you can see here that you lose. Uh, specificity after 60 years old. Uh, plasmic uh, specificity score is not as high as the French score and is not, uh, it doesn't change uh, with the age. Sensitivity is, uh, is uh, altered for the plasmic score and the French score uh, after 60 years old, so uh, sensitivity is low for uh, both scores after 60 years. So indeed, uh, the loss of uh, sensitivity, specificity and diagnosis delay are uh, indeed mainly explained by uh, the fact that uh, cytopenias are mild in uh, elderly and that uh, the patients uh, have oftenly uh, acute renal failure and a neurological atyp atypical presentation. So uh, that makes the predictive score uh, less reliable, which makes the diagnosis uh, more, more challenging in, uh, after 60 years old. When you have the diagnosis of uh, TTP, uh, the question is, um, is there any associated disease as you know uh, TTP is uh, uh, an autoimmune disease in the most uh, cases and uh, uh, is not as associated with uh, another disease in 60% of the cases. And in 40% of the cases, uh, you have an underlying disease uh, associated to TTP. In young people, uh, it is very well known that autoimmune diseases are the, the main uh, disease uh, associ associated with uh, T TTP. As you can see here, 30% of the patient, of the young patients uh, had an autoimmune disease associated with the TTP. Whereas in the elderly, cancer uh, is a condition that you can uh, find uh, associated with TTP in 11% of the cases. So cancer uh, is prevalent uh, in uh, elderly population of TTP.
autoimmune disease uh, are still uh, very well represent uh, represented in uh, elderly with 17% uh, of patients uh, presenting an autoimmune disease associated with TTP uh, in the elderly. Uh, as for uh, the other conditions uh, such as infection uh, or drug induced uh, TTP, there was no difference uh, between both groups. Well, now, when you have a diagnosis of TTP, meaning uh, Adam TS 13 deficiencies, uh, you assume that it's ITTP, meaning uh, mediated by antibody uh, anti Adam TS 13. But as you know, you have the herid hereditary disease of uh, Upshaw Schulman which is a hereditary deficiency of uh, Adam TS13. Indeed, the question is, can you diagnose uh, hereditary Adam TS13 deficiency uh, after 60 years old? Well, I would rather say no, but <laughs> data uh, prove that it, it's uh, untrue. Uh, here, the International Registry of uh, TTP um, you can see that among 111 patients uh, suffering from Upshaw Schulman syndrome, you have here three patients uh, which clinical diagnosis was made after 60 years old. So indeed, it is not the first diagnosis that you have uh, in mind, but just to know that it's not impossible to have uh, 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 hereditary uh, TTP uh, after 60 years old. Well, just to mention, because uh, we are talking about elderly, about drug-induced uh, uh, TTP, uh, and in particular, uh, antiplatelet uh, therapy, which is uh, very widely used in uh, the elderly population, because there is a big uh, rumor uh, and uh, literature about uh, antiplatelets uh, induced uh, TTP. Uh, and this is the uh, big uh, review of all the cases uh, reported to the FDA in the United States uh, and uh, combining with the case reports uh, of the literature um, during uh, 20 years. And you can see here that uh, 197 uh, cases of clopidogrel induced uh, TTP were described or reported. Uh, 97 cases of cyclopidine-induced TTP uh, were described or reported. As for prasugrel, uh, I'm sorry, I don't know very well this, uh, med this uh, medication. Uh, only 14 cases were described since it's uh, very new and uh, newer than uh, cyclopidine and clopidogrel indeed. 14 cases uh, were described or reported. But when we look into the data, uh, we can see that cyclopidine induced TTP are real ITTPs with the uh, Adam TF13 deficiency and antibodies against Adam TF13 deficiency. So, this is a real thing. There are ITTPs induced by cyclopidine, and the time to onset is uh, 2 to 12 weeks. Whereas for clopidogrel, uh, when it was measured, Adam TS13 levels were normal and no antibodies against Adam TS13 were found. So this is mainly like TMA induced clopidogrel uh, by clopidogrel and not real TTPs. You can find in the literature if you if you look into some cases of real Adam TS13 deficiencies in uh, clopidogrel, but most of them are uh, not uh, induced by uh, Adam TF13 uh, uh, deficiency. So just the special mention about cyclopidine, which is less used now uh, because of ITTPs induced, uh, just beware of uh, association between uh, drugs widely used in the elderly and uh, occurrence of uh, TTP. <laughs> 
Well, as you expect, indeed, uh, older patients uh, have multiple comorbidities, uh, which makes uh, the management and the follow-up uh, more complicated, and we will see that later. Uh, in the French uh, series, uh, older patients had diabetes and coronary heart disease, uh, with 20% uh, of the patient uh, presenting diabetes and 13% per, uh, of the older patients presenting coronary heart disease, as well as many cardiovascular factor, uh, risk factors, sorry, uh, such as dyslipidemia, hypertension, and chronic kidney disease, which were indeed more prevalent in uh, the older group. Indeed, they have as well uh, more treatments and uh, polymedication and uh, notably anti-hypertensive uh, anti treatment in 61% uh, uh, of the cases in the elderly versus 9% uh, in the younger uh, people and uh, anti-platelet therapy in 35% of uh, the patients. Uh, in the elderly versus 5% uh, for the younger uh, patients. So indeed, uh, older patients are uh, highly uh, at a high cardiovascular risk, are highly comorbid. I don't know if uh, you can say that in English, but I don't know how to say it. To say it. Uh, and um, they have indeed medication, uh, polymedication and medication altering uh, uh, hemostasis, which is indeed uh, a tricky uh, a question uh, in ITTP and management of ITTP. These results are in line with the Italian results. Uh, you can see here that uh, older people have more cardiovascular and metabolic diseases. 26% uh, of cardiovascular disease versus 7%, and here 13% versus 10% uh, for metabolic disease. So we have seen for now that uh, diagnosis is more challenging, presentation is not typical, uh, patients uh, have uh, different underlying disease, they have uh, very high comorbidities. So the question is, uh, do they have the same treatment as the younger people? Is there any difference uh, for the elderly? And the answer is uh, no. Uh, we treat the patient uh, regardless to the age at uh, admission. These are the results of uh, the study of the French cohort, uh, studying the 411 patients. And uh, you can see here that uh, in the group of uh, the young uh, people versus the older people, uh, steroid therapy and uh, plasma exchange uh, therapy were used uh, at the same frequency in both groups. Indeed, this study was published in 2019. So it was the era of uh, plasma exchange and steroids in frontline without rituximab and caplacizumab. So the results are only uh, uh, true for uh, this uh, era of treatment. Here in the Italian experience, it seems to be a little bit different uh, since uh, older people uh, had less uh, steroids and uh, less uh, plasma exchange therapy but more plasma infusion in the elderly. So management in Italy between 2002 and 2018 seemed to be uh, to undertreat uh, older people with steroids and plasma exchange and prefer plasma infusion. Indeed, this is interest, uh, interesting, but I don't know if it's very uh, statistically relevant since the sample is very small uh, in this uh, in this uh, series <clears throat>
Well, uh, it is very interesting to see here that um, response to treatment is not dependent on the age of the, of the patients, because in both groups, exacerbation or refractory TTP uh, are as well uh, as are represented equally in uh, regardless to, to age. Uh, that's the first observation from this, uh, this table. And the second observation of this table is that uh, salvage uh, therapy use of drugs is not different in both groups. So both groups rece received uh, cyclophosphamide, rituximab, vancristine, and splenectomy, regardless of age. So in the French uh, experience, uh, at least, uh, the elderly patients are not treated differently. They, don't know, they do not respond differently to first-line treatment, and they are not uh, treated differently uh, after exacerbation of or relapse. What do we know about the new era, uh, as you may know now, uh, of uh, uh, ITTP management, which is uh, the triplet era, uh, so the association of rituximab uh, and caplacizumab to uh, standard therapy, uh, therapy uh, meaning plasma exchange and the steroids in frontline. So we have we don't have data, uh, uh, very detailed da data about um, uh, elderly people. Uh, we just know that uh, in the big trials of uh, the beginning of caplacizumab, uh, Titan trial in 2016 and Hercules trial in uh, 2019, uh, age was not uh, an, an exclusion criteria. So uh, the patients were included regardless to age and you can see here that uh, the upper limit is uh, 72 years for Titan and 77 years for uh, Hercules uh, trial. As for the real uh, life data, meaning the German experience and the British experience of the triplet therapy, uh, uh, patients were treated regardless to age uh, and you can see here that upper limit is 83 in the German uh, cohort and uh, 82 in the British uh, cohort. So all the patients received uh, caplacizumab, rituximab, uh, and the plasma exchange therapy and steroids, regardless uh, to uh, age. What is the tolerance uh, of the treatment for the new era of caplacizumab and uh, rituximab in frontline? I cannot answer because we don't have the data. But for the era of uh, plasma exchange and uh, corticosteroids uh, first line, we have the data in, uh, in the paper of the French cohort. And you can see here that there is no difference uh, regarding uh, infection, bleeding, uh, thrombosis, uh, plasma exchange related adverse uh, events in both groups. The only difference between both groups uh, is uh, accidental uh, catheter self-removal or contention, which is consistent with the fact that uh, uh, older people uh, um, have more behavioral uh, abnormalities uh, at admission. So elderly people are treated like uh, younger people and uh, at the era of plasma exchange and steroids, we don't see differences in uh, the tolerance of the treatment. This is not true for caplacizumab and rituximab uh, first line because we don't have uh, the data for now, but uh, it's under, under study. Well, next, next question is uh, indeed the mortality in, in those patients. Uh, and in uh, the study of the French cohort, where uh, once again, 411 patients were included uh, among the 71 patients 
uh, that were older than 60 years old uh, at inclusion, you have 45 uh, patients uh, alive at one month follow up, which means that uh, mortality rate is very high uh, and is uh, of 37% in the elderly versus 9% uh, in the younger uh, patients. So it's a very high uh, surmortality in elderly people. And this uh, high mortality rate increases uh, dramatically after 60 years old, as you can see here in red, and not, no, do not look to the, to the blue bars, but in red bar, it's the one month uh, mortality. You can see that it drastically increases here after uh, 60 years old, and it continues to increase uh, with, with every deca decade to reach 50% after the age of 18, 80 years at the diagnosis. So short-term mortality is higher in the elderly. Why do they die? Uh, so uh, among the 26 deaths, uh, we have eight cardiac events, uh, four cardiogenic shocks, three cardiac arrests, one uh, ventricular arrhythmia, and uh, eight neurological events, uh, six ischemic strokes, and two intracranial hemorrhage, one mesenteric ischemia, one septic shock, and eight deaths uh, are, uh, the, the cause is uh, unknown. What are the factors associated to the one month's uh, mortality? It's uh, the acute renal failure, the cardiac involvement at the diagnosis, the age, indeed, which is a very, very high OR here, and uh, the total plasma exchange uh, volume. So, as uh, we, we've seen in the second slide of uh, this lecture, age and 60, the cutoff of 60 years is a major risk factor of high mortality, high short-term mortality. But the problem is that it's not, it's not only short-term mortality that is higher in elderly, but it's mid-term mortality that is very higher in elderly than in younger people. Here, so the same French cohort, among the 45 one-month survivors, you have at one year 35 survivors, which means that overall, from here to here, you have a death rate of 49% of the people uh, older than 60 years uh, in the first year uh, after the onset of uh, ITTP versus 11% here at one year in the younger uh, people. Moreover, uh, among the one year survivors here, 26% of them are institutionalized at one year. So ITTP after 60 years um, is a very, uh, very, very uh, uh, grave condition uh, in uh, elderly people. And you can see here, so now we look at the blue bars, uh, the one year mortality, uh, just as the one month mortality increases drastically after uh, 60 years and continues to increase for every decade, reaching 60% above uh, eight years old. Among the eight deaths here, uh, we have two strokes, two septic shocks, one cancer, and three are of unknown uh, origin. Uh, 
and the main in, uh, risk factor of uh, mortality at one year uh, was cardiac uh, involvement. So, uh, the authors of the French cohort wanted to know uh, and to compare uh, long-term uh, mortality in uh, the one-month survivors here uh, compared to a matched uh, elderly population and uh, to compare, uh, to find the, the match uh, population of uh, non-ITTP uh, patients uh, older than uh, 65 years old. They took advantage of a study which is the 3C study which is a study uh, aiming to uh, describe aging among the French population uh, and uh, 100 and uh, 1000 sorry and uh, 755 uh, participants uh, were enrolled in this uh, 3C study and the follow up was of uh, 17 years so the patients were uh, evaluated the participants and not the patients uh, every two years in this uh, published uh, cohort. And so the authors of the French ITTP uh, cohort uh, compared uh, data uh, of the 38 survivors here at one month uh, to the 3C uh, study uh, results. And what you can see here, which is drastically different, is the long-term mortality here in red, it's the non-ITTP elderly people, sorry. And here in blue, you see the long-term mortality of the ITTP uh, patients. And you can see that there is a threefold uh, change uh, between both uh, mortality curves. Uh, and having ITTP is a, is a very, uh, high, uh, it's, um, it's at high risk to uh, impact uh, long-term mortality. This is proven here uh, when they compared both groups and adjusted to many variables, including diabetes, stroke, cancer, hypertension, uh, coronary heart disease, chronic kidney disease, dementia, and COPD, ITTP is still a history of ITTP is a major uh, risk factor of uh, long-term mortality. And you can see here, which is very important, that when comparing ITTP elderly people to controls, elderly people, ITTP patients uh, present more cardiovascular diseases, like dyslipidemia, stroke, hypertension, coronary heart disease, and COPD. And this is very important, and this is in line and consistent with the literature about ITTP regardless to age. This is uh, the Cleveland uh, experience of uh, ITTP. This is a very nice um, uh, series. Uh, this, uh, published in uh, 2015, and uh, the authors here aim to describe uh, the occurrence of uh, several comorbidities after ITTP onset. And what you can see here is uh, studying hypertension, chronic kidney disease, depression, and stroke, is that here in blue, you have the prevalence of those disease in TTP survivors at one month. And here in red, you have the prevalence of those disease in TTP survivor during the follow-up. So you can see here that all the chronic diseases are much higher by two or threefold during follow-up. And moreover, overall prevalence here in ITTP of hypertension, chronic kidney disease, depression, and stroke are much higher than the expected prevalence in a match-controlled uh, population uh, in Cleveland. So 
having a past of ITTP increases the risks by two to three folds to develop hypertension, chronic kidney disease, depression, and stroke. And here it's the Oklahoma experience uh, about uh, mortality and probably probability of death. Here you have ITT patients during follow-up. And here you have the probably probability of death in uh, the expected probably probability, sorry, of death in Oklahoma and in the US. You can see here that the probability of death of the ITT patients is much higher than uh, the expected one and increases during 12 years to reach here uh, a sort of plateau, but you don't have many patients here uh, anymore. So ITTP is a major risk factor of high mortality uh, in the long-term follow-up and, uh, and, uh, and the risk factor of higher occurrence of comorbidities after the first uh, episode of ITTP, regardless to age and increased by age, uh, probably. So it is not clear where, uh, why uh, do they die more? Um, we don't know, since uh, elderly uh, respond to treatment like uh, younger people. So statistically, they, they are, I mean, uh, they, they are not meant to die because uh, refractory or relapses are not more frequent in elderly. Uh, but maybe that uh, the fact of uh, being um, elder uh, well, confers a previous chronic organ damage that is uh, accelerated by uh, uh, the, the ITTP, maybe because they have high comorbidities which are accelerated by ITTP, and maybe because um, uh, endothelium is uh, much uh, frail in uh, elderly, and uh, there is a lot of inflammation in the elderly, which uh, means that uh, uh, ITTP, even if uh, the episode is not severe, might lead to uh, uh, severe uh, organ da uh, damage, explaining uh, higher mortality. So this is the end of the of the talk. Uh, I wanted. Just to uh, tell you that my, my main messages uh, are the, the principal, the main messages are that the diagnosis is very challenging in uh, elderly, uh, since as we have seen, uh, the presentation uh, is, uh, can be very uh, tricky with cognitive impairment, uh, confusion, and renal dysfunction with mild uh, cytopenias. Uh, making uh, predictive scores uh, unreliable. They are uh, very uh, highly comorbid with uh, multiple associated condition and polymedication. Uh, the treatment is not different. We don't under treat patients because they, have, uh, they are elder, including, including the new drugs like uh, caplacizumab and rituximab. And uh, unfortunately for now, uh, mortality is higher, uh, short, mid and long-term mortality in this population comparing to the younger population. Many questions are still uh, unanswered in this field. Uh, as I said, the mechanism of life expectancy shortening after one episode of ITTP the optimal use of caplacizumab in this uh, population, uh, frequently polymedicated, uh, notably with antiplatelets or anticoagulants, uh, and at a higher risk of bleeding. The safety profile of rituximab and steroids uh, frontline, uh, notably uh, regarding infections. And uh, the challenge now is to limit the duration of ICU and hospitalization since. A uh, very high rate uh, is institutionalized uh, at one year. Uh, 
so so uh, the challenge is uh, is to limit the duration of uh, hospitalization thank you for your attention and uh, i would be glad to answer to your question if uh, something wasn't clear or uh, if you want to talk uh, about this uh, topic thank you thank you very much dr fadlala for these clear and comprehensive presentations our, our first question has arrived so i will read for you yeah. uh, thank you very much for this great presentation dr fadlala are you aware of any investigation initiative regarding an TTP score for the elderly? Uh, yes, it's a very good question, and uh, I'm not aware of. Uh, you 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 mean uh, a, a predictive score? Yes, that that's the question. Yes, she said yes. Designed for uh, elderly. Well, it's a very good question, and I'm not aware of it, but. Uh, <laughs> It's a it's a very nice question. I'm not aware of uh, of any work about this, but it's a very great uh, idea uh, for uh, a new work uh, in this field. Thank you very much. So we'll see if there are any other questions. The the anti Adam TS thirty antibody. Titer is similar in the elderly. Are any specific triggers for the elderly identified? Yes, indeed, the, the titer is similar. Uh, so there is no difference uh, uh, between uh, titers uh, in uh, both populations. Uh, as for the specific triggers, well, uh, no. But uh, as you know, uh, drug-induced uh, TTP are very associated with drugs given in elderly people. So like antiplatelets, as uh, I said, but um, uh, therapies like myeloma therapies or uh, uh, immunotherapies given for cancers. Uh, so uh, those are the main triggers uh, uh, retrieved in uh, elderly people, but not specific indeed, but um, since you can have immunotherapy uh, without being elderly. <laughs> Thank you. So the comment is very interesting presentation. Thank you for sharing your expertise and Thank you. I echo the same. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again, Dr. Fadlala, for this excellent presentation, very, very clear and full of details.